Welcome to Electra Online, and before we show you how to do some example problems using the partial fraction techniques of integration, we're going to go over the synthetic division mechanism that we use to factor the denominator when we have something that looks like this. When we have a, a third order, or fourth order, or fifth order equation, or I shouldn't say equation, but expression in the denominator, we need to factor it in order to be able to write it as a sum of partial fractions. So maybe we're a little rusty, and so I figure we'll do a little example here on how to use what we call synthetic division to come up with the factors of this denominator. So the, what, the, what, uh, the way you do this is you first guess your first factor. So maybe x minus 1 would be one of the factors in this uh, denominator, and if it's wrong, then you try another one, another one, but this is a special technique. It's not just a pure guessing game. So let's start with assuming that x minus 1 may be our first factor. So the way you do synthetic division is you take the coefficients of the terms in your denominator and write them down. So we have a 1, a 2, a minus 5, and a minus 6. And so if x minus 1 is one of the factors, then x would have to be equal to 1. So you use the 1 then to try this out. So um, you go ahead, you uh, put a 1 here, and then you draw a line, and you bring the first coefficient down right here. All right, so that's just the mechanism of how you do synthetic division. Now, the next steps are fairly easy. You multiply this one times this one, and put that product over here, and then you add those together, which gives you 3. Then you multiply this times this, which gives you 3, and you add those together, and you get a negative 2. And then you multiply this times this, you get a negative 2, add them together, you get a negative 8. Well, if that is not a 0, if this last number is not 0, then this was not a factor of this denominator. All right, then you try the next factor. Now let's say you try the next factor, and the number you get down here is maybe minus 20. Well, that's further away from 0 than minus 8. That means you're going the wrong direction, and you must try something in the opposite direction. So maybe I tried negative 2, I get minus 20. Negative 3, I get minus 40. Definitely in the wrong direction. I maybe want to go to 0, plus 1, plus 2, and so forth, and just try it out. So what I like to do is if minus 1 doesn't work, maybe plus 1 works. So uh, against the next fact factor, so guess the next factor. Well, it's not really the next factor because we haven't found the first one yet. So re-guess, I guess. <laughs> guess the first factor again. Maybe that's the way we should write it. First, yep, there's a T missing factor again. Okay, so maybe I'll try the X plus 1 this time. So in that case, X has to be negative 1. So again, we rewrite all the coefficients here. So 1, 2, minus 5, minus 6. Like that, and so instead of a 1 there, I plug in a negative 1 because if x plus 1 is one of the factors, then x must be negative 1. Again, you draw a line down here, you drop down the 1, negative 1 times 1 is a negative 1, add those together, you get a positive 1, negative 1 times this is a negative 1, add those together, you get negative 6, negative 1 times a negative 6 gives you a positive 6, add those together, you get 0. Bingo! Success this time because that number became a zero, so therefore we know that this is one of the factors, which means we can now write our denominator as, so x cubed plus 2x squared minus 5x minus 6 is now going to be equal to, this is one of the factors, x plus 1 times what's remaining after you take this factor out. What's remaining can be found by looking at these numbers right here. See those three numbers right here? This is the coefficient of the x squared term, that's the coefficient of the x to the first term, and that's the coefficient of x to the zero term. Basically, that's the constant. And so, writing over here, we get a 1x squared uh, plus a 1x and a minus 6. So that would be the remainder after we factor out an x plus 1. So that's why synthetic division is a pretty nice way to go. Now. Can we factor this? Well, typically now we're down to a second order expression. We could probably factor by using our uh, typical factoring techniques. So this is equal to x plus 1. And if this is factorable, we'll get two, um, two, two factors like this. For the uh, x squared here, we'll put an x and an x. And now for the numbers over here, uh, looking at the signs, it looks like one has to be positive, one has to be negative. And then when I multiply, I get minus 6. When I add them, I get plus 1. How about, um, hmm, how about plus 3 and minus 2 might work. 
So minus 2 and plus 3, because if I add them together, I get plus 1. If I multiply them together, I get minus 6. And there we go. Those are the three factors of the denominator, which means I can take this integral and rewrite it like this. So we have now 4x minus 5 in the numerator. And in the denominator, we'll write it as a product of its factors. So I have x plus 1 times x plus 3 times x minus 2, of course, times dx. And now we can go ahead and write it as a sum of partial fractions. So we can say, OK, that means I'm going to write this expression, 4x minus 5, divided by x plus 1 times x plus 3 times x minus 2. And notice that those are all linear factors in x. And so therefore, I can rewrite this as a sum of partial fractions of a over the first factor, x plus 1, plus b over the second factor of x plus 3, plus c over the third factor, uh, that would be x minus 2. And then I go ahead and find out what a, b, and c are equal to using our, our typical techniques for partial fractions, and now we're able to integrate it. So I just wanted to show you again that if you end up with something like this in the denominator, or sometimes to the fourth or fifth power, then you'll have to use some mechanism to factor the denominator, and synthetic division is just a perfect way to do it. Okay, and that's how we do that.